Have you been listening to uh, what's going on with CM Punk lately? He did this interview, and uh, apparently he's getting shit tons of heat from the current wrestling fans from it. Um, basically, what did he do now? He said wrestling is fake. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. He said wrestling is fake and he's like, "Yes, I know it's predetermined, but uh fans use the word predetermined instead of the word fake like it like it softens the blow or like it lessens the blow." He's like, "Look, wrestling is fake." And the reason that he left was because he wasn't sure that, you know, when he does get hit in the face on purpose or or when he does get hit in the face hard, he wasn't sure if it was because it was on purpose because somebody didn't like him or if it was an accident and he was just done dealing with that kind of shit, you know. And he did this interview with Sports Illustrated, so. And now at 36 years old, he wants to get hit in the face? Yeah, now he wants to get hit in the face for real. At least he knows that, you know. (laughs) <laughs> At least he knows it's coming. Until, until he actually you know? gets seriously hurt, and then maybe he'll be singing a different story. I don't know, man. I, look, I, I love CM Punk. I think he's fucking great. He's funny as hell to me. You know, I know a lot of people's opinions on him is very negative. Obviously, he's a hometown boy, so I do side with him. But at the same time, if people are getting genuinely riled up over the fact that dare CM Punk, dare anyone say wrestling is fake, then, then these people really need a fucking better life. You know, I mean, there's. I, I, I don't know. I, I think, listen, you know, there is something to be said about where you make your bones and where you make your bread, and then you go on to kind of bash it, and you wouldn't have the platform to do that if you didn't have that platform to do that. Where right. did you come from? It's kind of like, don't forget where you come from. It's funny. He's a punk rock hardcore guy, big H2O fan, and the don't forget your roots is a big expression for H2O. Uh, and I know H2O is a New York band. I mean, we know them. My mm-hmm. brothers played with them. Mm. So, you know, we're all big part of the hardcore scene down here. But, uh, you know, and it's kind of like, don't forget your roots, CM Punk. I mean, you're, you're, you come from wrestling. You you're, you know, I mean, all those pictures of you as a 10, 11-year-old kid wearing Macho Man shirt and all this yeah. stuff. Now you're, you know, shitting on wrestling. I can see where it leaves a bad taste in people's mouth. And listen, wrestling fans are, you know, they'll come after us. They'll come after everybody. When they don't like something you're saying. Now, granted, some of it is ridiculous, but I think it is something that's supposed to be some sort of um, always kind of a little secret society where he kind of backs the business. Where I think people expect that from him to kind of still, you know, still be part of it. Even if you're not part of it, you're part of it still. But do, do you know you what think, I mean, Mish? Do you think so that don't, there's... don't shit on it because you wouldn't be in the UFC with a full house press conference if <laughs> for not for the McMahon machine that made you. I think that's what people are saying, and I think that's a fair thing to say. I think if I get into, you know, like I'll just say, if you're, you know, you get into one, you're in one profession, you go to another, and then you just piss all over the other profession. Like, well, you kind of got this gig because you were in that gig. Don't yeah. you see that? Yeah, and, and he does. He does recognize the fact that you know, and Sports Illustrated was was they asked the question pretty much saying, you know, you were in that business for fucking twenty years. And does that mean that you you you're kind of a fake too? And he said, yeah, it's kind of an identity crisis to sit there and be this character and then be your your own person in real life, too. So, I mean, it was, it was an interesting read. Um, I, I guess, you know, is there anybody else, and going off of what you said, though, is there anybody else that really protects the secret society, a.k.a. kayfabe, anymore? I mean, we well, got all the shit. Well, kayfabe, sh- no, but one, one thing I noticed is that, look, like superstar Billy Graham, Mm-hmm. He has gone back and forth with his love and hate for the business. We've joked on it. You've talked about it, I think, sure. on your show, too, over the years. He's proud of his Hall of Fame ring. He loves the McMahons. Then he hates the McMahons, and he's selling his Hall of Fame ring. You know, like when you don't get your way, all of a sudden, you know, you're part of the brethren. And then when, you know, little things don't go your way or, you didn't, you know, they released you from a contract or you're not getting the merch money you're supposed to get, then all of a sudden, fuck WWE, I'm going to piss on this ring, I'm going to... You know, it's, it depends on what time of day it is. You, you, there's guys who wear that Hall of Fame ring with pride, and then there's people who I think are hawking it for crack. So it's like, <laughs> you know, it depends on where they're at in life and what their their opinion is at the moment. But I think CM Punk is so freshly out of wrestling. He's not a superstar, Billy Graham. He didn't go through a series of multiple illnesses and injuries uh, because, you know, he had one slight, you know, compared to Graham. I mean, my God, the guy had a liver transplant. You know, the guy was on life support machines for months. Um, there's a guy who's bitter, you know, as he gets older. Because, you know, what can he do? He's an old man now. There's really no place for him in certain things. So you get the bitter speeches, and I hate WWE. And then they invite him back. 
I'm sorry for my transgressions. I, I love wrestling. I am wrestling. I've loved wrestling since I'm a little boy. It, they flip-flop. A lot of these guys flip-flop. But I think CM Punk, the fans say, you know, he's not out, out of wrestling that long, and he's getting this opportunity in the UFC because he was a WWE superstar. You know, show a little bit more loyalty to us. Us as in everyone who lives and loves wrestling like we all do. I mean, it's not all of our lives. You know, it's recreation for some of us. Some of us, literally, it is our lives. I mean, there's people, you know, their whole decor in their house is wrestling. And that's cool. Whatever whatever kind of fan you want to be, just, you know, don't be a nut job about it. But if you want to, I can understand people being protective of it. I mean, look, sometimes people almost accuse us of, like, being, We, I mean, we like wrestling so much. We do a goddamn show every Monday night for years and years on our own time. And and people will still accuse us of hating wrestling or hating real wrestling or hating particular what not we're not real wrestling fans which is the dumbest thing you could say because I think 35 years of consistent wrestling fan is a real wrestling fan yeah. wouldn't you say so much no absolutely you know 1979 the current I think and never wavering and always being a fan every step of the way I don't think that's a bad wrestling fan but um, with CM Punk I think be a little bit more gracious because you are being allotted to do what you do because of wrestling. I think that's the bottom line. Sure. No, that's that's a good point you know? to it. You know what I mean? Does he come off, though, in the... I, I mean, obviously, I'm going to read it, but does he come off, though, like he's hating... like denying wrestling, hating on wrestling? Is that what the fans have a problem with? He he comes off as if he's defending himself. You know I mean? you got to look right. at the scenario from, from multiple sides. You know, A, you have Sports Illustrated, obviously, you know, very professional sports magazine for the most part. A lot of people do... Uh, get their information from Sports Illustrated, and on the other side, right. you have his impending MMA match coming up, and people looking forward to that, and him trying to <clears throat> convince the MMA fans, you know, that he's not a wrestling guy; he's an MMA guy now, you know. And then he's also on the other side trying to convince the wrestling fans that he's not a wrestling guy anymore; that he's now an MMA guy. So he's got these this weird pseudo you know, a, a change going on in his life where he's not just, it, it's kind of like he's taking off the hockey suit and putting on the football suit, you know? And it's like, well, you know, you're Wayne Gretzky. You're a you should have expected guy. that, though, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, maybe he thought that there would be more crossover fans than there would be as many, uh, uh, I, I, I hate to use the word, but haters. You know what I mean? It seems like he's more flooded with hate these days than he is with any kind of, like, admiration or anticipation of his MMA debut or anything else like that. It's like people aren't looking at him objectively. They're looking at him for whatever they think is face value. And so I can understand where he gets a bit angry and he's been angry for it. You know, um, not only that, but you look on the other side of it too, the third side where he's being sued from one of WWE's doctors or whatever. His no, wife. They couldn't, did they talk about that in the article? No, no, they did not. No. <laughs> and and they and his wife just quit WWE. You well, know? there's the whole thing. Now, when was this interview done? Do you see some sort of parallel thing here where AJ mysteriously quits out of the blue, where there was no inkling that she was going to do that? Um, and these articles coming out where maybe AJ was going to get heat, and he's like, "Get out of there now, because you're going to get a lot of fucking heat because of what I'm saying." Well, this this article came out on the tenth. On uh, on Friday, okay. April tenth. So, I'm imagining that this came out. Maybe this was the article itself was probably made a few days before that. You know, and as far I'm, as you know, more I hear about stuff like this, I'm starting to think that was a you know definitely pre premeditated for AJ to get out of there before more heat was on her. I, I, regardless of whether well, it was a love fest back there, I, it had to be uncomfortable for her back there. I mean, we talked about this last week. It's just you know you know there's people who can't even live down if they're going out with a girlfriend or boyfriend, let alone be the husband or wife of somebody who's got a lot of heat. Right. I mean, how's that going to work? I mean, I, I was surprised when she stayed on when he left. I couldn't believe that she, and even when he did interviews saying, well, my wife still works there. And the interviewers would even be like, your wife still works there? Yeah, she's still there. You know, she has her own separate career. And they were kind of saying, really? And she's welcome back there? <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. You know, she's, the, she's married to the enemy. How, how could that be? She's a loyal wife. How, how how do you separate the two? Yeah. You know, and then the, the, some of the doctors back there are suing a husband who have, probably have to work on her. How does that work, dude? Yeah, I think the last time that we talked too, which was uh, before before Mania, before our Mania collaboration that we all did together, I think we we talked about uh, AJ. Why is she still in WWE? Meanwhile, you know, uh, Doctor Amani or whatever Doctor Aman is fucking uh, suing 
Phil Brooks, CM Punk. You know, and I yeah. just said, I'm like, that had to have been an awkward conversation. They have to run into each other. I mean, yeah, that's, well, he's, that he works for the company. How do they not see each other? Right, exactly. It's I mean, got to be super uncomfortable. Uh, there's no way that could have worked. And like I said, the only way we're going to know is if Mike from High Spots or Rob Feinstein or um, what's his name gets, uh, um, what do you call, um, you shoot guy gets uh, oh, an yeah. interview with one of them. I just thought, I definitely don't see them getting CM Punk, but maybe they'll get AJ Lee. You know, and I would actually prefer... Believe it or not, I mean, especially coming from me, but I would actually prefer to hear her side of the story because she's the objective one. You know what I mean? She's the one on the outside. Yes, of course, she loves her husband. Yes, of course, she cares about her career. But she can stand on the outside going, okay, this is what I saw. You know what I mean? It always means something more coming from a neutral party, especially because, you know, feelings don't get in the way as much. You know, obviously, she does have feelings for, for punk and stuff like that, but you would almost think that she would be able to describe things um, in an objective fashion to where, you know, wrestling fans can actually find out the whole story. Because I, I, I still don't believe, you know, after everything that's been said, after everything that Punk said on, on Colt Cabana's podcast, after everything WWE rebuttaled to and the shots that they took, you know, I still think that there's just more bullshit. Something. There's just something else besides that. Because even at this point where they're trying to sue him over over you know the fact that oh he he never had a cyst in his back you know and he's like well clearly i did and he showed other pictures on their very own site that had the picture of the cyst and obviously you know he went on radio stations like opie and anthony and he showed off the cyst scars there from the surgery and so it's not like he's just making this shit up you know It, it just seems so weird that it's over such a small thing it's like, in this scenario, if there's even questionable doubt, why is WWE pursuing it so adamantly? Yeah. Well, I think they're also angry, too. I mean, let's look, look at the feud that they had with Warrior that went on for years. Uh, lawsuits back and forth. Uh, just real venomous things said up until two years ago. I mean, that's why it's so unbelievable. Now, and now they have a statue resurrected to Ultimate Warrior. I mean, yeah. Just crazy wrestling, the way wrestling goes, is like life, crazy. You never know what's going to happen, or you never say never. Um, but even with CM Punk say, I will never go back to wrestling, it's just, I don't know, maybe both sides, you know, CM Punk should maybe just stop, stop talking about it, but I, I don't know if he can because he's so affiliated as sure. much, if not more, than Brock Lesnar because guess what? Brock Lesnar was an NCA, you know, a double-A champion right. in college. He was legitimately in another profession in real wrestling. CM Punk was not. I mean, Brock had other accolades going. He tried out for the Vikings. There was all sorts of things. He played football, almost made it to the pros, was literally in the pros, and then got cut. So he had a bigger story to tell. CM Punk is its all WWE. It's all about WWE, unless someone wants to bring up Ring of Honor. And then, once again, that's another just another wrestling promotion company. Uh, Brock Lesnar had a bigger story. He, Brock Lesnar was pegged to be a star since he's 16 years old in, in the world of sports. Yeah. You know, he was, uh, he was uh, what do you call, an enigma. CM Punk was a guy who you know, worked the independence for 10 years and you know, worked his way, worked hard, was one of the better guys. He's all pro wrestling. I don't see how he can escape it. Sure. 20, as you said, Mitch, 20 years, are they just going to race that? Yeah, I mean, it's just insane at that point. Yeah, it's like, to be honest with you, that's like us, I mean, not the same thing, obviously, but we do a show about weather. We do a whole show about all weather. <laughs> that's our new thing. Oh, didn't you guys do a wrestling radio show? Uh, yeah, that was our other life. We're, we're, right now, we're talking about the weather and inclement climates. That's our new theme. We're, we're, we're the weather guys. I just so had it's a like, uh Yeah, uh, I wouldn't even ever heard of you guys if you didn't do a wrestling show. Yeah. yeah, but I don't want to talk about that. We don't talk about wrestling anymore. That's that's nonsense. Yeah. It's like, uh, okay, uh I mean, really, and that's when people get annoyed. I think when you deny who you are, you deny what gets you to the dance, people get pissed off about that. Yeah. Yeah, that's why, I, and I agree. I, I think it's it's odd that he's still so defensive about it. I, I really, you would think at this point he'd be like, yeah, whatever brings me money. I love those people. Yeah, no, I'm not, I don't hate anybody. But he's just so, well, so angry. Maybe if he said that, maybe if he gave some, some showed some love, literally, to, to something about the business. 
instead of hating it so much when people are like, dude, you made a lot of money. You made a lot of merch money. I wore, I'm wearing 10 of your, I got 10 of your shirts in my closet right now. I think, look, that press conference was a disaster that I saw. It was about a week ago. Did you see that with the stupid drunk people in the audience asking them wrestling questions? Did you see that? No. What was that? Oh, yeah, yeah, that yeah, press yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God. What we a saw mess that, that was. Yeah, after the. What a mess that was. And you could see his uncomfortable annoyance. And, and granted, there were some real idiots in that audience. And, they, and the whole thing of being able to drink in that prize, that was just strange to me, that coming up to the podium with a beer. Yeah. I mean, just strange. Um, but that was just one of the nightmares that I think he's going to – that's not his last nightmare with a press conference, in my opinion. Right. I yeah. think it's going to get worse. Because people will say, did Brock get that much problems? People are trying to even go back and see if Brock had that much kind of problems and don't be wrestling fans in the crowd chanting, you know, Hogan and stupid things like that. I don't think Brock got that because I think people took Brock more seriously, maybe. Sure. I think Brock uh, it looks like a more serious competitor, to be honest. Well, I mean, yeah, if, if I you mean, compare the two. I mean, God knows they were trying to get him back. Well, I mean, if you, you compare know, and then the two. with WWE and just realized, fuck it, I'd rather do entertainment than get my face punched in. Yeah, but that that's just it right there. you, you got to stop yourself right there. You said the answer. I mean, I can see people talking shit to Punk's face. Because they think that yeah. they could take him. How many people do you know mm-hmm. that's going to talk shit to Brock's face because they think they could take him? You know what I mean? Uh, I think, yeah, I, exactly. I mean, yeah. you see stupid remarks at all. Sure. Lesnar's a, I'm like, listen, the one thing I would never describe Brock Lesnar as is a pussy. That's kind of a right. stupid. You know, you always got to see the guy who's saying that, like on the other end of the computer. It's like, yeah, yeah Brock, uh, yeah, Brock Lesnar pussy is not, I wouldn't call him that. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't call, you don't have to like him, you can call him an asshole, but, but he's far from that. Right, but so, I mean, just because he, and it's so funny because he got lost a couple of fights in UFC. Most people do. Most people don't go undefeated in UFC. <laughs> right. But at that, 95, 99% don't. I, I think that's the difference is that, I mean, if you look at Brock Lesnar, and, and, and just to be fair, you know, you look at Brock Lesnar and he appears to be an athlete. You know what I mean? CM Punk oh, yeah. can't get away. He appears to be a wrecking machine legit. Right. You can look at CM Punk out in the crowd and just think, you know, he's going to a concert or something. You know or maybe I mean? you can take him. Yeah, exactly. Right, and you'll get right. a lot of you know guys, I'm sure, who want to mouth off to him. And I'm, I have this feeling down the road he's going to get into some sort of outside problem with somebody. I just see it happening yeah. from from almost a mile away. People are going to try and test him, so to speak. Um, I just think once again, and everyone's like, well, the the critics will be silenced depending on the first fight that he has. Not really. He's no. going to have to have a bunch of fights before he silences anybody. No, I agree. The first fights. What you, that's just the beginning of the road. Yeah. And who do you think they're really going to put him against? You think they're going to put him against anybody of of merit? I I, I don't think so. At least not for the first few. I think for the first few, it's going to be more of like a feeling out process. You know, see how he does. They're going to put him up against somebody with talent. I mean, they're not going to just throw him a fucking scrub like a Owen fifty two guy or nothing. But you know, at the same time, <laughs> you know, I mean, they're going to give him a fucking glass Joe coming out there and shit. You know, I mean, it's it's. I think they're going to give him somebody that's at least a rookie or, or somebody that has potential and stuff like that. Maybe a couple of good wins and maybe a couple of losses, you know. But at the same time, I, I don't think they're they're going to fucking bring him out to. Oh look, surprise opponent, Randy Couture. You know, no, it's not. It's not. Happening. Yeah, no. I mean, I know. Well, listen, I'll be watching like everybody else the first time he fights. I mean, I know there's nothing scheduled right now, but yeah. um, who knows? You know what's going to happen and stuff. And he's not getting any younger. I don't know how long they're going to delay it. Right. I, would you say he's going to fight this year? <laughs> He better. <laughs> I Seriously. Mean, it's, it's, it, it, I mean, was there ever a time frame, by the way, of when he was supposed to fight? He said it was going to be within a year. When he first came out there, I don't know if it was uh, on Rogan's show or on one of those side networks that he did, but he did an interview where he said he wanted a year off, and he got that year off what? from WWE, and then he was going to have a year of full training. And within that year, so it, it was probably supposed be to be... fall or some point fall or early winter this year, right? Yeah, you you kind of hope so. I mean, you can't put it off too much longer, Kev. I mean, thirty seven years old. Right? There's at that some point, point. Well, I mean, not even just that, but there's at some point that the hype starts wearing off, and it becomes just this guy ringing a fucking uh, a dinner bell. You know, and nobody gives a that's shit. That's a good. That's a good point. That's actually a good point. Yeah, I think if you go beyond the year, it's not that big a deal. I, he has to make real calculated moves at this point. I mean, listen, I I know you. I'm a CM Punk fan too. It might even sound like I'm talking yeah, like no, I'm not. No, we're... I, I I actually I am a fan of CM Punk. I just uh, you know, and and actually even his outside interests is stuff that I'm interested in: horror movies, hardcore music, a lot of similar stuff. I you know I know people who know him. I personally never met him. I know a multiple bunch of people who know him. 
Um, sure. You know, and they're all cool with him because they're cool with him. But, um, you know, I I just, I the thing that bothers me probably is that all of a sudden, you know, pro wrestling is, you know, fuck you kind of. Thing. And I think we all just take it personally because we all supported him and bought his DVD. But I think everyone, it doesn't matter how old you are, I think if you feel dissed, so to speak, by anybody, you, you get defensive. We get like that on the show. People get like that who listen to this show. Sure. You know, if you feel like uh, someone is taking a jab or not showing you that respect, you're going to be defensive. And I think right now he's just in serious defensive mode. But you have to expect that because he is known for pro wrestling. It's going to be a long time before he's known as UFC or MMA UFC guy. Yeah. He's a WWE guy still until he shakes that tag, and it could be years. Well, maybe he'll be back here in a year. Who knows? Could be.